Here we are again in segment three. Now we're gonna concentrate on ignition. Again, the same example, 89C. Okay, the fifth requirement in example 89C is as follows. If the CSTR is operated at the lower steady state, so if we were operating here, if we were operating here, now, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of ignition or extinction? Of course, you're not afraid of extinction. You are already in the lower steady state. Duh. So you are afraid of ignition, right? You are afraid of ignition. You are afraid that your reactor will go from a lower steady state with lower temperature and ignite to higher temperature okay to higher temperature to a higher steady state ignition where the temperature will shoot up somewhere from 520 all the way to around 5 I would say 515 or something like that uh, sorry 615 okay from 520 to 615 okay you're afraid of ignition taking place so if the CSTR is operated at the lower steady state, determine the ambient ignition temperature. So now you are afraid that the ambient ignition temperature will cause, sorry, the ambient temperature will cause you the trouble. Okay, and part four, we were afraid that the feed temperature will cause us a trouble. Which kind of trouble? The kind of trouble where we could go from the upper steady state, jump down to the lower steady state. Yani for the reactor, to, uh, we're afraid that the reactor will go through extinction. So there, the ambient temperature was under control. We are, were not afraid of the ambient temperature. We were afraid of the feed temperature. We say, what if, you know, the weather goes cold and the feed temperature drops? and so on okay here shabab we are worried about the ambient temperature okay so we're not worried about that feed temperature we're saying the feed temperature is under control the feed temperature was 52.5 or is 52.5 degree fahrenheit and we will stay at 52.5 degree fahrenheit we're only worried about the ambient temperature so if we are using if we are using the river for cooling it down okay and the river is at 50 degree fahrenheit okay we are not sure if it's gonna stay at 50 degree fahrenheit maybe maybe the ambient temperature will go up and therefore i won't be able to remove as much heat as i designed to remove and therefore the temperature will go up and up and up until we lose the lower steady state and jump into the upper steady state meaning until ignition happens okay so let's again read the question if the cstr is op operated at the lower steady state determine the ambient ignition temperature ta ignition above which see now above which ignition will occur also estimate the rise in the temperature when runaway occurs. So now we're using the word runaway because we're afraid that ignition will take place. So estimate that temperature before and after ignition. Okay, before and after ignition. Okay, so, so if we worried about ignition, then let's plot the RT ignition and again this is the rt ignition which has same slope as the original rt just like the extinction rt had the same slope and was parallel to the original rt okay so there we go this is our new ignition RT and you can see that it is tangent it is tangent 
to the GT, right? This is tangent to the GT. Okay, and what happens here? Let's see. If in this case we were talking about TA, right? We were worried about TA going up and therefore not cooling enough and therefore the temperature inside the reactor going up. Okay, and it goes up until I lose the lower steady state and jump into the higher steady state and a phenomenon called ignition. Okay, so if ignition happens, I'll lose the lower steady state and jump to the upper steady state. And when ignition happens, I'll lose, I'll jump from the lower steady state temperature, which is around 540, around, I don't need to see the exact number, and it will jump, the reactor will ignite up to a temperature that is around 625. That's when runaway happens. Okay, when the runaway happens, the temperature jumps from a lower value of 540 to a higher value of around 625. Okay, so let's plot or let's write, let's write the RT equation. Okay, remember with me, what was the RT equation? Well, the RT equation was RT equation was CP naught times beta times T minus alpha, oh sorry, minus CP naught times T naught plus beta times TA. Okay, okay, excellent. So, in the previous example, we were worried about T naught as we explained. Okay, that could cause extinction. Now, in this problem, we are worried about TA. We're worried about TA, and it could cause ignition. Okay, and this is my RT ignition. Okay, and as you can see, the RT ignition, okay, let's look at the slope of this. The slope here is not function of TA. So the slope will not change. Not change, I mean, compared to the original one. Okay, the only thing will change is the intercept. The intercept will change if TA changes. Okay, so let's see. Let's see here. Okay, so for this equation, okay, for this equation, the only variable or the only value I'm looking for is TA because the rest I already have. The rest I already have. Okay, so I have CP naught, I have beta, I have here CP naught, I have T naught, okay, I have beta. So the only thing I'm looking for is TA, but in order to calculate TA, I should choose values for RT and T, and this values could be any value, okay, on this line. On this line any value on this line because any point on this line satisfies this equation so if, for example if I choose T to be 580 then RT will be this value if I choose RT to be let's say this value 30,000 okay then this will be the value for T and so on okay however the easiest number to read the easiest number to read is when RT is 0 okay so let's see at RT equals to 0 T which equals we say T critical right? what is that intercept here okay equals let's see 
this is our line right the purple one okay here come on what does it equal well it equals to be precise 517.6 around 0.6 ranking okay that's the t critical Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute in the above equation. Okay, so what's the value of RT in this case? We said it is zero, right? The value of RT is zero. And then let's go to CP naught plus beta, which we said, calculated it earlier. Okay, times T, which we said it's 517.6 minus minus cp naught the value of cp naught we have it already which is two sorry mm -hmm. okay two three five point four times t naught t naught is now constant t naught is not changing in this case um, have t naught under control and it was 520 ranking and then we have plus beta okay need some space plus beta do you remember the value of beta it was around 92.94 92.94 times times ta okay times ta and again, the only unknown in this equation is TA. Okay, and we can calculate this TA, which is TA, ignition, and can find that it is 531.3 Rankin. Okay, what was the original TA. What was the original TA? Okay, remember the original TA? The original, the original TA was 50 degree Fahrenheit and the TA ignition is around 71.6, 71.6 Fahrenheit. That is this value. Okay, so you can see Shabab that if TA increased slightly above 50 degree Fahrenheit, no big deal. Okay, I'll just be going from, I'll just be going from, so this is where I, I was originally. If, if the TA increases slightly above 50, I'll go from here to somewhere there. Okay, to somewhere there. If it keeps increasing, I'll reach here. Okay, where the temperature is, we say it around 540 inside the reactor. But if, if, okay, if the TA goes above this guy, come on, then I'll jump from here all the way to here, which is around 622 degree ranking. Okay, so. I should be worried about this guy. Okay, TA. TA. This is TA ignition. If the TA goes above 71.6 degree Fahrenheit, then ignition will occur. Okay, so now we learned how to calculate the ignition temperatures and extinction temperature, whether it was feed temperature or TA temperature. Okay, of course. The ignition or extinction phenomena could occur because of anything else as well and we can calculate it as well okay so let's move forward Saib, now with the last requirement of this example that is requirement six it says if the heat exchanger in the reactor suddenly fails while operating at the lower steady state what would be the conversion and the reactor temperature when the new steady state is reached 
So basically, basically, we are gonna plot a new R T, right? Why is that? Remember, G T will not change because G T was simply G T was simply X M B times minus delta H reaction. It was function of temperature, but R T, if you recall, was simply C P naught, right? C P naught times T minus T naught, okay, minus U A divided by F A naught times T A minus T. Okay, so this was R T, and you can see if the heat transfer stopped, if the heat exchanger failed, that means this term goes to zero, right? And therefore, you will have only this term. Okay, so now the R T will change. So let's plot the new RT. This is the new RT, which is again straight line. All right. And obviously you have only one solution, which is here. Only one solution, which is here. Okay. And from here, you can read the steady state temperature. Okay, I believe the first, the lower steady state temperature earlier was around 520 Rankin. Now the temperature will jump from 520 whew, all the way to around 666. Okay, 666 Rankin. That's a huge jump in temperature. That's so dangerous. So everything, the, all the propylene oxide probably will, <laughs> propylene oxide will, will evaporate, right? You will have a, like eruption. So make sure that never ever your heat exchanger fails. Okay, that's how it happens. And of course, in order to find the conversion, you can read the delta G, okay? And you can find the x from sorry you can not delta g the gt the gt you can read the gt from here and then you can find the conversion from this reaction okay minus delta h reaction okay and this should be around 0.987 of course very high conversion because the operating temperature is very high the kinetic is very fast of course, please note that there is no intersection here. Okay, so we have only one solution. Only one solution. Okay, with this, we reach the end of lecture 52. And we'll see you soon, inshallah, in lecture 53. Bye for now.